Hi everyone, um, today we're looking at Dynamapper, which is a projection mapping app for iOS, um, so you can use it on your iPhone or iPad, uh, for people looking for a cheap and easy way into projection mapping without investing a lot of money into professional software, this is a very good entry product. So um, looking quickly at the features. So this is the loading screen. Um, you can save previous setups uh, or start from fresh. So we're going to go to new. Um, then we're going to create a polygon. And literally you just grab these corner pins with your finger to stretch them to meet the area that you want. Um, if you're like me using an iPhone rather than an iPad and you run out of space, you can press this arrow up here to get rid of the HUDs temporarily. You move the polygon around to position it the best you can and then select these corner pins to move them to the correct position. There we go. Um, in addition to, oh yeah, and to bring back the tools, just press this arrow again. Um, in addition to doing square polygons, you can also add bezier ones. So if you want to do a sphere or a curved or a shape like around a cylinder, for example, you can do this. And with this center one, you can also distort the mesh in the middle as well, which is quite cool. Um, or if I was to do the sphere, I'd do something like this. Okay. Um, so I'm going to delete that one. Bin, delete. Right. So let's create a new one. Um, what else have we got? Um, when you're working with projection mapping, uh, with this particular tool, you're best working at the back of your projected object and working forwards so you can build up the layers. But if, for example, you wanted this the other way around, you can move between the layers and move them backwards and forwards. So that should bring that to the front. So that will send that one to the back. Um, let's add another one just to show you again. So back and back again. So you can build up layers of projection content. Um, from this point, I'm going to go back to the home button and show you what I started earlier. Just save a bit of time. Activate. So this one is mostly mapped to my scene. Um, Looks like it's moved slightly since I last used it. So at the moment I've got these locked. Uh, so I can, no, don't do that. Let's reposition them quickly. Let's uh, lock that again so I don't nudge it. Unlock that one. Um, that looks good. Locked, unlock this one. Now one of the nice things about using um, an iPhone or an iPad is if you, if your projector or your control area is far away from the thing you're projecting onto. With this you can actually walk right up close to it and um, check your alignments in greater detail which is actually really useful. Um, I've been in lots of events where you've been projecting from long, long distances away and it becomes quite difficult or you have to use like a camera relay again which is a bit tricky. Okay, let's lock that. Uh, this one, unlock. Okay, that'll do. I'm not going to be perfectionist about this. Um, so I'm reasonably happy with the way things are set up. Next, we want to add some media. So let's select a polygon. Let's go to the UVW. And let's check some contents. Now, with this one, you'll notice when I select this, there's a default material and an action material. So what happens is, while it's playing, it always plays the default material to tap the particular polygon in play mode, and it switches to different contents. So for now, I'm going to use black and white contents. Um, okay. Um, oh, you can also change colors, um, RGB values, transparencies. Select the next one. Um, choose material. I'll give you a slightly different one. Next one, there we go. So you notice all the ones I'm choosing so far are black and white. Oops. Oh, you can also duplicate things as well. So I forgot to mention that before, so let's delete that. Um, save time, say there was multiple objects that are all the same size. Um, say I wanted another one like that. Select the object and hit this one here, which will duplicate it exactly as it was before, and that also is another great way of saving time. 
but that's not what I want to do right now. I'm just adding some content to.